You were forced to play a Diablo, basically. Yes. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, 36 hours non-stop or something like that. So mm -hmm. we could have the written review on, on Game Reactor. Uh, now it's been a week. Yeah. And um, how is it? Is it still holding up or...? I am still madly in love with Diablo. I think I put in something like... I, I, I didn't check, but I think I put in something like 50 to 60 hours so far. Um, it's addictive is what it is. I can't stop playing it. That's what Blizzard does. Yeah, it takes that old school Diablo uh, playstyle and sort of streamlines it in a, in a lot of really cool ways and makes it even more action-packed, intensive and fun and fast. Um, and I just can't stop clicking. And that whole streamlining thing, I, I've heard a lot of complaints about, you know, it, it being yeah, too yeah. simple and no reasons to, to yeah, reload. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the, the old school fans have complained that you don't assign your like strength and dexterity and vitality stats yourself and that it doesn't have the traditional skill tree with branches and you have to play skill points and then they're stuck like that forever. Um, instead, stats are attributed or assigned automatically and you can switch out your skills whenever you want pretty much as you unlock them. What that means, I feel, um, first of all, you can't really make any mistakes w in, with your build. In, in the old Diablo yes, games, yeah. um, basically you had a bunch of options that were either sucks or doesn't suck, but they weren't labels as such, so you had to go <laughs> online, look on the interweb and see whatever somebody else had found out before and then just use that, and that's boring. Um, instead, you can experiment freely uh, and quickly and you know, find out, oh, this is really, really cool, or and then you use that, or oh man, this sucks, it doesn't fit my playstyle at all. To just switch it up and go with something else. And I really like that. Also, Diablo has always been an action game, but I feel like it, it's even more action, fast-paced now, because your primary attacks build up that resource that you use for all your secondary cool stuff. So whenever you're hitting somebody with your sword, you build up rage or spirit or whatever that you can then use to you know, throw out really, really cool, awesome attacks. So you don't have that sort of, you don't have to manage your, your mana or whatever that same way, or eat mana potions all the time. And I really like that. Do you think it's going to, to, to last you a shorter time? Uh, I, I mean, if, if there's no reason to reroll, I, I, I think I like uh, kind of that um, yeah. no, no pain, no gain yeah, 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 sure. uh, aspect. Um, but no, I, I don't feel like it, it really hurts the game. And also, you know, because there's four difficulty levels, there's Nightmare and Inf Hell and Inferno, and Inferno is insanely difficult, apparently. Okay. Um, the, you, you'll still get to put a lot of time into it. Um, and you know, there's no uh, the old games had you know a risk reward trade off that wasn't very good because you know you could very possibly end up in a situation where you created a character that sucked and you had wasted tens or twenties of hours yeah, okay. making it, and you don't have that risk anymore. Mia must be back in Tristram, crying over the old man's corpse. She'll soon have another one to cry over. Yours, meet the butcher. But it's still rainbows and, and unicorns, right? <laughs> no, there is a rainbow. Uh, there's a rainbow halfway through Act 1, I think. And then there's obviously the secret level, which is all rainbows and pink unicorns and happy clouds. But other than that, it's really grim and really, really dark. Um, it's a Blizzard game, which means that you know, the graphics aren't the best in the world. But they, sure. they, yeah. they, you know, the, the art style helps a lot. They you know, get the most out of what, what they do. Um, I think you know mo most of it looks really, really. There's some fantastic environments in it. When, as I was playing, I was like, "Oh, screenshot, screenshot, screenshot!" Because I have to show this online in the review, and then end up not using it because that would be spoilerific. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. th there, there are really uh, th there are a bunch of really, really cool environments, especially when you get into the dungeons. That are, they are really varied, a lot more varied than I had actually expected, with both the types of environments and the layout and all sorts of stuff like that. I only had time to play it for, for a few hours, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but to me, it seemed like the music was pretty forgettable. But Yeah, I feel the same way. Okay. Um, there's just something missing. Uh, I mean, uh, Diablo always had this really odd musical style. that was sort yeah. of a mis mix of gothic classic with you know, hard rock guitar and drums. Um, Diablo 3 is more traditional in that sense and does, just doesn't have that same memorability. But I guess it's hard because 
the Tristan theme from Diablo 1 is probably one of the most iconic pieces of game music ever, on par with you know Super Mario Brothers maybe. Um, I don't really think how anybody can top that. That, that. That's a difficult task. So, yeah, the music is forgettable. It doesn't suck or anything, but, but no. You know. And the story? Story is... Uncle, you're alive! Thanks to you and your friend here. I seek your wisdom. Tell me of the fallen star. The prophecy of the end days surely points to it as a sign that the end has begun. Please, uncle, not more of your stories. Typical Blizzard quality. So that sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which means it, it's unfortunately not very good. Um, those guys really need to hire some better writers. Because there, there's a lot of the villains inadvertently end up feeling like the, uh, the, the Black Knight in uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. Like, oh, when we, um, <laughs> always, you know, whenever you defeat part of the plan or whatever, they always pop up and say, ah, just a flesh wound. So you're the wretch that's given me such trouble. Thrash as you might, you will not keep me from the soul stone. At least, at least it feels like that. You know, yeah, okay, I just defeated your entire army. I threw you out of the castle. I killed your lieutenants, but you're still gonna kill me, sure. Yeah. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, it goes through pretty much all the writing. Everybody has these really cliched, ham-fisted lines. But then again, I mean, you don't need a great story, do you? I no, mean, you no, just I mean, need yeah, something yeah. to say. I, I'm, I'm not playing Diablo for the story again. I'm exactly. playing Diablo to kill my mouse. Uh, <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, it's the sort of thing you live with, but I, you know, I had hoped it would have a good story because actually, the, the storytelling in Diablo 2 was really good. Okay. In, in that regard, it's, it's worse than the previous game. But, yeah. I uh, promised Captain Ho I'd watch my temper. Do me a favor, and don't mention that I shouted at you a little, all right? Playing on normal, it's fairly easy. There, there was a couple of boss fights where I got incredibly stuck, but, but I got over that. But once you ramp up to Nightmare, um, stuff gets really, really, really hard and really, really fun as, as a consequence. When, when you have these packs of elite mobs that all have two special abilities, like they can teleport and drag chains of fire between them that will pretty much insta-kill you if you get touched, means you have to be, you know, really think on your toes and be quick about mov moving around and you know, find the right skill set for tackling that kind of enemy and then using that in the proper way. And the challenge of that is really what I think is the most rewarding part of the game. There's a lot of the fights out in the out overworld when you're just meeting random monsters that are a lot more fun than the boss fights. The boss fights are good, but some of the really insane fights, I had one fight where there are these big bull-like creatures that will you know, do a head rush on you. Th normally they're pretty tough, but here we ran into a special elite mob that had like five millions of them, and they all had the ability to teleport, which is bad, <laughs> and the ability to create five clones of themselves, which is really bad, because suddenly we're, we're fighting not just five monsters, but 30, all of which can pretty much one-shot us if, if we're not, you know, uh, acting properly. So, and we were running around like crying girls. <laughs> <laughs> we, we died so many times on those. Is, is that sort of challenge that, oh, you know, uh, that that really, you know, keeps you go keeps you going, keeps you playing. So it's hyper action. It's hyper action, it's and it's you know, and once you finally get that bastard down, oh my God, it's so rewarding. <laughs> um, so, and, and that's really what it does. I mean, it, it, the odd thing about Diablo has always been, you know, if you analyze it. It's just about clicking on, on monsters until they die, yeah. which sounds incredibly boring <laughs> on paper. But there's something, that there's this something magical thing you can't really put your finger on about it that just makes everything click in a way that, that few other games do. And Diablo 3 really keeps that intact. 